Now these are larger stinging ants, they're Ponderini tri. And what that means is that they're a type of ant that's what's called semi-claustral. It's right there. So they can go and forage on it and get it and gather it and bring it back to their nest. Vivariums. These types of enclosures can be perfect for a wide array of life and are often very stunning to look at. The goal is to create an ecosystem that not only mimics the one to which your primary inhabitant is native, but functions similarly as well. The best vivariums combine aesthetic and function to create one perfect display. Let's take a look at what I've been working on. Welcome, friends. Now, when you hear that ditty, what comes to your mind but soft, rolling hills and green filled with the laughter of small creatures? Now, that is much like the theme of today's video, where we are going to be observing a small, utopic village, if you will, of my own creation for small creatures, just like hobbits. Today, my friends, we are going to journey into the small world pictured behind me to observe some creatures that you may have seen on this channel before. Today, we are going to look at my bioactive bullet ant vivarium housing the Texas bullet ant, or hairy panther ant, colloquially known as Neoponera velosa. Now these are large ants, mm. but they are still quite small, but they are also quite large for ants. So we're going to observe just how at home they have made themselves in this illustrious live planted mini ecosystem that I've crafted with these two very hands. So join us, friends, on the adventure of a lifetime. Now, the hairy panther ant is actually one of the most widespread species of Ponderini tribe ant that we have here in the Americas. You can find this particular species in southern Texas all the way through Central America into South America. So, when constructing this vivarium, I decided to theme it after some of our beautiful Central and South American rainforests by using some endemic American plants. So when I was constructing my idea for their bioactive enclosure, I was picturing some of the plant life that they would encounter throughout Central and South America to help me keep up with the requirements that this species needs. Now, these are larger stinging ants. They're Ponderini tribe. And what that means is that they're a type of ant that's what's called semi-claustral. That means that even when it's just the queen, she has to go out and continuously forage for food and water. She can't wait until she has workers to do all the work for her. So these ants have very small storage in their abdomen, their stomachs, and, and their storage components are quite small. So they need constant access to food and water. 
And that's where my brilliant mind hatched a plan. These beautiful plants here, 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 and here are colloquially known as bromeliads. <laughs> the word of the day is colloquially. Colloquially means lots of people call them by that name. So it's a little bit of a joke at the beginning that these are all these are colloquially known as their binomial name, Neoconor Philosa, because most people don't know their binomial name. But that's very helpful when identifying ants because uh, there are very many, very, very many ants. But anyway, these plants are called bromeliads. They're also known as cup plants, colloquially. And they're called this because they store water. These leaves catch raindrops in the rainforest and it funnels into the center. So you can peel back one of these leaves and it reveals a small shallow pool of fresh water. Now these ants, like I said, always need access to food and water in order to properly grow and maintain a healthy colony growth rate. So I keep all the water We have a visitor right now. Take a look. These are no small ant, folks. Take a look at the size of this ant in comparison, perhaps even compared to the size of my face. But these are quite large ants. Oh, she ran away. Their colony is actually right under here. Now, this is a struggle with ant keeping because you want to juggle the optimal care for the species while also being able to see what's going on. A lot of people prefer to keep ants in formicariums, which are a style of enclosure that allows you to see all the inner workings of the nest and the larvae and the eggs hatching. However, I've opted for a more natural setup, not only because it can help the ants feel safe, more secure, and to reproduce and grow their colony faster, but because being semi-claustral, there's really not much of a difference between the queen, the large reproductive, and the average size workers. There's a few minor differences. The queen is about 20% larger and she has a large thoraxial kind of hump. Her thorax is larger because that's where her wing muscles were stored when she was a princess ant and had wings and flew out of her mother colony to start her own colony. So. I've opted to allow them to create a nest not unlike a nest they would create in the wild. This species typically nests at the base of trees. And so I've created a very arboreal foraging area. Arboreal means up in the trees. Whenever you see a colony of Neoponera velosa, they're almost always coming out of a small buttress or a rotted hole in a tree and climbing up looking for termites, looking for other insects, looking for water deposits in order to bring those resources back down to the base or, or a hollowed out cavity of the tree to bring it to the queen, to bring it to the larvae, and to bring it to the other workers. So I've created a very natural setup. These ants are very at home climbing up this tree-like branch, hosting these plants full of exactly what they're looking for in the wild. No, 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 no. Do you hear that? Something is calling to me. And it's not that best of minnows who's looking for a lady. It's something in here, an ancient evil force. What is that? Oh, no. Surely not. <coughs> did you hear that? I don't know what was that, guys, and I did not do that. Is this perhaps 
the one ring to rule them all. That's kind of scary. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. We should put that there. We're not gonna touch it. Now, bioactive. What does this word mean? Is it based in true science, or is it simply a fancy term that people slap on things to sell stuff for a lot more money? I'll let the viewers at home decide. But in my terms, creating a fully functional ecosystem. It needs key components, which is why I have activated this ecosystem myself. Now, much like any ecosystem, my soil column is equipped with a variety of beneficial bacteria and fungi to aid my plants and their root systems in gathering nutrients and growing strong. In addition, my enclosure also has a variety of small organisms that work tirelessly every day to feed on the waste generated by these ants. I have two species of springtails, which are tiny little insects that feed on decaying material. Teeny tiny! I also have a variety of isopods, which are terrestrial crustaceans and they also feed on decaying material. They're what we call detritivores. So they feed off of decaying leaves, off of poop, off of dead insects that the ants have discarded. So they're very critical in not only sustaining the lifeblood of this ecosystem, but cleaning up the poop. Because that is something we could all use a little more of. Am I right? Well, Amazing, great job, me. A self-sustaining environment, perfectly equipped to handle the delicate and magnificent hairy panther ant, Uniobara velosa. Well, I hope you travelers enjoyed your time coming with us to the beautiful and minute world of Neoponera Velosa. I mustn't, but how can I refuse the one ring? To rule them all! It'll be mine. My own. My precious. So make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content Buy the merch, watch our other stuff, and above all, tune in next time to Jack's World of Wildlife. Whoa, this feels weird. Man, if I don't go viral for this, I don't, I don't know what, what I'm doing. Um. Guys, I'm seeing a really big eye, like huge, like a giant eye, and it's going like, and it's pointed at me. Um, if you don't hear from me, I have been consumed by the legions of Sauron. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and if I survive, stick around. Check out the next one. Bye. Bye-bye now. See you later. You won't see me. Guess why? I'm invisible. You can't see me. I'm invisible. <laughs>